it's going to be a beautiful night. And I think it's time, because I have spent a lot of time with this scope and I've done a lot of images with it, for me to give you my complete and final astrophotography review for the 122mm APO from SV Boney. This is their SV 550 series. I did have a chemo treatment today, and I've actually still got chemo being pumped into me. That's what this is. It's not some fancy new microphone. So let's get to this before I get really sick and I can't talk anymore. First things first, if you're looking for your first scope, I don't recommend this scope. And there's one simple reason for that, and that's that big scopes like that guy are complicated, okay? So let's be upfront about this. Really, if you're looking for your first scope, look for something like a 60 or 70 millimeter, uh, a doublet or a triplet. A triplet if you're gonna do one shot color work and a doublet if you're gonna be doing mono work, all right? Which the, the doublet will save you quite a bit of money if you go mono. But with that being said, scopes like this, I recommend for beginners, big scopes like this, they're awesome, okay? They really are. I love this scope. I'm telling you that up front. But you know, there are complications and additional challenges with a scope this size. When I first did an unboxing of this video, I commented about how the focuser was just a touch rougher than many of the other SV Boney scopes that I've used. Now, I have since fixed that, and, and basically I'll show you what I did. I actually set the screw back to where it was, and I took it and I turned it about that far and that's what fixed the problem and and this kind of brings me to one of my first points with a big scope like this everything is more sensitive everything okay and that's why a big scope like this is more challenging they're certainly way more rewarding but yes there was more of challenges one of the things that i still need to do with this scope is i need to kind of tune the focus here in a little bit there are just this slightest small chromatic aberration that's directional and it's in my one-shot color images. And that directional chromatic aberration is because either the focuser is not quite lined up with the optic or the optic isn't lined up with the focuser, one of the two. And that is something that's actually not too difficult to fix. And you, as an astrophotographer, if you are buying a scope of this size and this caliber, that is something that you should actually feel quite comfortable with. What you will need is a laser pointer, which you'd put in the focuser itself, and you'd point it at something like this. This is a calibration cap. It has a hole right in the middle that you put at the end of the scope and put a little bit of cellophane clear tape on it. And then you would start to adjust these screws that go all the way around the main the focuser rotation zone. And that will get the focuser aimed at the optic. And then once you do that, of course, then you check the actual optic and make sure that the optic is aimed right at the focuser. And that will take care of that. And that's something I have to do yet. However, I haven't done it and that's because uh, mine is, is really close, <laughs> okay? I'm actually kind of willing to live with it. And maybe a little bit later uh, when I'm feeling better and I'm off of chemo here, uh, I will tackle this. But it's not that difficult. When SC Boney was designing this scope, one of the requirements that they had for it was that it wouldn't be very heavy, okay? And if you look at other scopes in the 120 millimeter range that are not carbon fiber, okay, you will find that this is actually the lightest one out there. Now, <laughs> when they were designing it, at the time I didn't know I had cancer, and so I was kind of like, who cares about the weight, you know? I I pick my other scope, which is the dual side-by-side -side rig that actually weighs as much as I do, and I carry it out here every night. Uh, well, now that I have cancer, and yeah, uh, lifting heavy stuff is a challenge. So, the fact that this thing is light, it's actually something I really appreciate, okay? And the little guy back here, the 61 mm Sharp Star, believe it or not, that rig weighs just as much as this one does, which is kind of pretty incredible if you think about it. And that's, you know, mostly because there's no counterweight. Of course, it's a carbon fiber tripod. A lot of that's the AM5, but also the telescope itself is quite light. Now, one other thing that I really appreciate about this scope is the dew shield, okay? The dew shield is quite long, all right? This is how far it extends. And I like a nice, generous dew shield, mainly because it means that if I don't have a dew strap for it, which I don't actually have one for this guy yet, the ASI Air that I'm using doesn't have power uh, for a dew strap, and so I, I can't really run one yet. 
do intend to buy an ASI Air Pro here, or Plus, as soon as I uh, kind of know where I am with my cancer treatments, and I'm, I'll then maybe spend a little bit of money on something. This long dew shield, pretty much I have not had any issues with dew because it does a really good job of protecting the optics. This scope comes with a Vixen rail. Now, the Vixen rail is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually a nice match and has a lot of versatile holes and positions and so forth that you can place the rings at. However, if you're going to do astrophotography with a scope, and this is an astrophotography review, I would highly recommend that you get a Lossman D plate. And that is simply because of the weight of the scope when you start adding all of your astrophotography gear to it. I think that this has got a little bit too much flex in it for astrophotography. Now for visual, it's just fine. And I did use it visually and didn't have any problems. Uh, vibrations and stuff settled down just fine. I just think that with astrophotography, you're going to want a lost mini plate, which will also give you a few more options for you know, compatibility and so forth. Uh, I hope that SV Boney comes out with an option later on that you can get a gloss mini plate along with it. You know, maybe a little bit extra cost would be totally fair. Now, if you're wondering what kind of guide scope should you use, SV Boney just came out with this guy. This is a 40 millimeter, 170 millimeter focal length. If you pair it with like a 290, IMX sensor, which has a pretty small pixel size. It's just about a perfect match for the scope uh, if you're using a camera with about a, a 3.75 micron pixel, which is about the average size these days. Nice. And, and this guy is actually pretty cool. I'll, I'll, I might do a video on this guy separately later on. So I'm sure you're wondering about the optics, okay? That's probably the biggest question in this video that you want to know. Are the optics any good? Well, I mean, I did a visual test for this thing. It's exceptionally good. And I also found no chromatic aberrations whatsoever using narrowband filters, of course, and also shooting broad spectrum. No filtration whatsoever. Uh, I don't think I was even using a UV IR cut filter and I didn't have any chromatic aberrations, even with very bright stars. So, exceptionally well corrected. This thing is also fully multi-coated. They're a green type fully multi-coated lens optic. Also, the edges of the lenses are blackened, which means that the, the, the images you get from this are very nice and high contrasty. And it has knife edge baffling on the inside, which are quite good. Uh, I gotta say, they do an excellent job. Now, the focal reducer that SV Boney has made for this is a 0.8x focal reducer, which takes the scope from f7 down to f5.6. And in astrophotography, or astronomy for that matter, you'll notice that we're always going to shorter focal lengths. Now, uh, the focal length of this should be 1, 680 millimeters. Uh, I know I measured it at 681. It depends a little bit on the temperature of the night. The optics kind of shrink and swell a little bit and it changes the focal length about one millimeter. And it kind of back and forth a little bit. So yeah, yeah, interesting thing there. Yeah, not, your focal length isn't exactly a precise science. But anyways, the focal reducer, I think it does an excellent job. Stars are nice and tack sharp all the way to the edges. And vignetting, now vignetting, there is a littlest bit of vignetting in this. I know with my images, there's a little bit more vignetting on one side than there is the other. And that is because this, this needs to be a little bit more calibrated. Uh, and, and by the way, this scope was through several other people's hands. And also I took a few things apart and kind of screwed with it, probably messed it up. In the beginning, I, I accidentally loosened up the, the focuser when I was trying to take something apart on it. But anyways, the vignetting, it is pretty well controlled with APS-C. I can actually get away with taking no flats. You know, there's a little bit of vignetting, but basically a background extraction actually kind of takes care of that. And with 35 millimeter, this thing will probably support a 35 millimeter sensor. I think that the Shars the stars will be sharp all the way to the edges. However, you're going to definitely have to take good flats if you use a 35 mm sensor with this scope. But it is a big scope, so yeah, it's gonna handle those bigger sensors quite well. Now, my overall thoughts about the cost of the scope. Yeah, I really like the scope, and would I have spent the $1,600 on this scope that it costs? Uh, absolutely, yes, I would have, you know. And 
they did offer me actually a new copy, which they would have sent me as a, as a small discount. But I decided to keep this one because I was kind of already in love with it, so to speak. And yes, I do love the scope. It has really has kind of pushed my astrophotography into kind of a whole new quadrant, so to speak. You know, I'm kind of doing, I've got a big boy scope now, so to speak. And this is big boy scope that doesn't really cost very much. It's I, I've gone and looked at all of the other scopes out there that are kind of in this range. And really, this thing is quite competitively priced. Now, uh, right now, I'm using it with a one-shot color camera, uh, but rest assured, I will eventually be getting a mono camera on here, but that'll be after chemo treatments are done and I'm working a full shift again. You know, because right now I'm missing a lot of days at work, so money's a little tight. Now, my final thoughts, who is this scope designed for? I've kind of already alluded to it heavily. This is your second scope. This is not to be your first scope. Uh, this scope will really propel you into a whole new branch of objects and because it's relatively fast, f5.6, you know, definitely going to get you some images you could not get before. Also, uh, for mono, I don't, I haven't hooked a mono camera up to this thing yet actually, but I am very confident that it will perform very well doing uh, narrowband imaging. I know the dual narrowband imaging, which is HOO, that I've already been doing it using SV Boney's uh, six and a half nanometer, which is in a production is a seven nanometer filter. Uh, I have uh, been getting great results from it. Stars are tiny in this thing, which is great because when stars are small, that's good. It's an, a good indication of the optics, and it certainly is, you know, a really nicely well rounded scope. There's no Achilles heel in this thing and there's no real weakness to it whatsoever um, The small issue that I have with the Vixen rail is, is really something that is you know easily solved with a small purchase and It's probably something a lot of astrophotographers will want to do anyways if they want to attach more gear to the Vixen rail itself Which is probably what I will do. I will probably put an ASI Air Plus uh, mounted down here somewhere just to, uh, to get weight low to this thing because I don't want to use a counterweight. I really like having no counterweight on this thing. And yes, the AM5 does a fantastic job of handling this scope without any counterweight. Uh, that was a question that a couple of my readers asked me and so I wanted to confirm that to you. And I've tried it with the counterweight and without the counterweight and guiding is superb both ways. Furthermore, if you're shopping for a duo, yeah, this is a great, <laughs> great match for this thing. Uh, the match made in heaven, actually. So I'm going to give you a headless shot here for a second. Now, on the other side are the knobs that you use to tighten down the rings. They're nice and long, and they project out quite a ways, which can sometimes be a cable snag issue, but I don't really see that being a problem if you just you know do proper cable management. But I'm going to kind of push something a little bit here. I see a lot of people, they rotate the focuser, and that isn't often the best way to rotate a scope. Uh, one of the ways that I really like to rotate a scope is, is to loosen the rings and actually rotate the entire scope. And one of the reasons for this is that doing this means you can recompose your image and you don't have to redo your flats because everything stays the same. You're just rotating the entire assembly. So that's something to keep in mind. It's actually pretty easy to do with this guy. And you might want to put like maybe some stops, uh, some felt tape up here or something like that, so that the thing doesn't kind of move back and forth on you. But it's pretty easy to do, and the rings that this thing comes with make that pretty easy. Now, attaching the ZWO EAF was quite easy. It just took two little bolts, and it applied in quite nicely. I haven't had any issues with it. Now, for a mono camera, you probably will definitely want to get an EAF for it because you're going to have to refocus for every single filter. Uh, that being said, though, the shift from one filter to the next, because the thing is very well apochromatically corrected, is extremely minimal. If you are pinching pennies in the beginning of building your rig, uh, you could go ahead and just get a batten off mask and focus manually. It's quite easy to do with this scope. At f5.6, focus position is, is quite crisp and easy to find. 
So I know you guys really like seeing the fireflies in the backgrounds of my videos. I live out in the country, there's very little light pollution here, which means that we actually do have fireflies. You know, and by the way, if you ever heard your neighbors complain about how we don't have fireflies anymore, you should bring that up. That light pollution is the reason why fireflies are kind of becoming a rarity now. You know, you have to go out in the country where there is no uh, night lights at night, and you have to be in about a Bortle 5 or Bortle 4 or darker in order to have a good, healthy firefly population. That's your bonus tonight, okay? Now, what do I think of this scope? <sighs> Man, I really like this scope. <laughs> I gotta say, this scope has been the most fun of all the scopes that I've purchased so far because it has allowed me to get a little bit deeper and at some targets and so forth, uh, and also with a bigger sensor and, you know, more resolution. And yeah, there's been some challenges here and there. You know, I know sensor tilt with a scope this size is really something to be concerned about because, you know, well, you're working with a bigger sensor usually. And that's one of the reasons why I tell you guys, you know, this should be your second scope. Uh, that's my biggest caution to anybody. But yeah, it's a great scope. I really like it. And I am actually looking forward to getting some more imaging done tonight. So take care, everybody. And uh, enjoy the images that I'm now going to play for you.